Today's opening commentary relates to that vintage moment of Mitt Romney, who has rebranded himself in the degraded standards hashtag resistance age as the woke plutocrat Mormon because he does things like recognize that rape and racism are unacceptable. And I can uh, commend him for that. But God, our standards have really degraded, huh? That Mitt Romney, a embodiment of all of the worst impulses of the plutocratic elite that guide the Republican Party and all too much of the Democratic Party uh, could be praised in today's political context. And I bring that up because there are two things that are happening right now with regards to our modern politics, our top-down class warfare that defines today's Republican Party that is embodied and extended by the infamous 47% video that sunk Mitt Romney's 2012 presidential prospects. First, the gutting of net neutrality. Net neutrality is under attack. And, he, and let me just explain net neutrality for everybody so it's really, really simple what net neutrality is. I'm going to quote now from Victor Picard. Net neutrality protections are essentially safeguards that protect internet service providers, ISPs, from interfering with the internet. Net neutrality gives the FCC the regulatory authority to prevent ISPs like Comcast and Verizon from slowing down or blocking certain types of content. It also prevents them from offering what's known as paid prioritization, where an ISP can let Particular websites or content creators pay more for faster streaming and download times. With paid prioritization, ISB could shake down a company like Netflix or an individual website owner, coercing them to pay more in order for it to be moved on a faster lane. Net neutrality often gets treated as a sort of technocratic squabble over ownership and control of internet pipes, but in fact, it speaks to the core of the social contract between government corporations and the public. What it really comes down to is how can members of the public obtain information and services and express themselves creatively and politically without interference from massive corporations? What this is, and this is according to a very, very basic Marxist understanding. This is an enclosure of the commons. The Internet Commons, which was a publicly funded utility, which allowed for the creation of a hybrid market and commons economy, is now being re-engineered by government to serve a basically as a giant cash cow for corporations like Verizon and Comcast. This graphic will give you a sense of what the internet age might look like if the Trump administration's plans and the FCC under Ajit Pai continue to move forward in their mad rush to give more money and resources to internet service providers and block innovation and creation on the internet. Higher bills for you, slower stream times, and all going to some of the worst companies in the world's pockets. And this is just crude accumulation. This is the first wave of how a market works. There's always a commons resource. There's always something that is community developed and community developed. Maybe it's some version of a hybrid system where markets contribute, where government's the foundation, and where communities and the commons evolve something. Now it's going to be privately enclosed to create profit for incumbent legacy corporations that pay off Washington and exploit the public interest. This is happening in line with a massive tax giveaway scheme that is moving fast through the Republican Congress. This is the core Republican agenda. Make America poorer, sicker, and dumber. And it works together. It works together to enclose a commons, give a giant giveaway to corporations, and then design a tax bill whose primary benefits will be top-end earners, and private corporations. The New York Times says the far-reaching tax bill, now the, like the one being considered, would touch nearly every American and every business, small and large. There are pro proposals that it could affect how much it costs for you to buy a house, care for a sick relative, adopt a child, and spend and send the children to private school. As with any a tax bill, there are winners and losers. Many households would pay less in taxes, but some would pay more, including about 13 million middle-class families, according to an estimate by the Joint Committee on Taxation. This also is going to involve massive corporate tax cuts and even increases for people like 
graduate students. Now, here's another way that this these plans intersect. Check out this incredibly embarrassing clip from Fox News's ever embarrassing Jesse Waters talking to uh, a, a, a seemingly kind of, uh, you know, uh, not particularly thrilled a child who's on to talk about taxes i hope when he is hopefully a normal and successful college student no one digs this clip up and embarrasses him uh but everybody involved in this uh should be called on at least some type of sort of weird conservative obsession with child wonderkins which is another one of the many many bizarre pathologies of the conservative movement this is a kid explaining to jesse waters who made his career off of harassing people on the street for bill o'reilly uh, why we need to th create a pass a tax plan that will benefit the plutocrats of this country this is pretty bizarre tell me why you think uh, lowering taxes is good economic policy i think um lowering taxes would be better because right now our taxes are too high <laughs> and they're way, way too high, and it has to stop. <laughs> Trump's been talking a lot about lowering taxes, and um, Obama, and um, they, 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 um, they um, made the taxes go higher. Yep. Um, which probably didn't help. And right now, there's taxes on everything, like <laughs> free education. Who's going to pay for that? Taxes, all these other things. What's going to pay for that? Taxes. So um, I think our taxes need to be lowered a lot. <laughs> all right. And I would pay for it starting by taxing every single piece of money and holdings that Jesse Waters has at 100%, making him homeless, and kicking all of that money to free colleges, but one of many examples. Also, if the Department of Social Services still exists in the Republican governance age, can we call it on that kid's parents, Jesse Waters and the Fox News booking department? But this all works together. The attack on net neutrality, which is an attack fundamentally on, in fact, freedom, innovation and information is gonna facilitate the type of coverage you saw just there because incumbent corporations, cable service providers, ones with the money, influence, and access will have clear lanes to give you propaganda videos like a child in a Trump hat explaining to you why we need to pass top-end tax giveaways for the already hopelessly dysfunctionally rich in a society defined by extreme inequality. And then it will loop around because the tax giveaways and cuts on corporations will create even more capital to reinvest in the political process and Washington to strip away and destroy the very last vestiges of the American safety net and enclose more commons to create more profits. Republicans look at this and the right looks at this systemically. The Koch brothers, the Republican strategist, Grover Norquist, they see a complete synchronization between assaults on the public sector, tax giveaways, paring down the American state, and redistribution of wealth to the top. It involves packing the courts, which the Trump administration is doing incredibly effectively. It involves getting rid of the open pipelines on the internet, and it involves a generation-defining inequality-increasing tax giveaway. This is another failure of neoliberalism. Neoliberals don't think structurally. They think in a piecemeal way. These guys don't, which is part of the reason why they're unending assaults on most Americans have been so effective. So look, we need to keep fighting against the net neutrality gutting by the FCC. We need to go up against this tax cut. It's about to pass. And this is just as damaging in many respects as gutting Obamacare. It's generation defining next wave of inequality and top down class warfare. And we need to think structurally because the continuum of getting rid of net neutrality, tax giveaways to the rich, and that kid talking to that troglodyte, Jesse Waters, is all part of a continuum that is destroying our politics, our economics, our media, and cultural lives. It's time we take notice, fight back in an integrative way, and reclaim the commons, and also save that kid's future dating and social life. Now, and I'm really serious about that, I would never ever, ever. I mean, 
What, could you imagine if we built content? And now after that, I'm going to have an eight-year-old on to explain what's happening in Zimbabwe. I mean, it's, it's, what, what, the, what the hell? That kid should be like playing baseball. Not talking to Jesse Waters. Je- I mean, I don't know what Jesse Waters Jesse does. Jesse Waters should Jesse be playing Wa- baseball too. To be to be fair, softball. Yeah, t-ball. T-ball. Exactly. Jesse Waters can't handle anything at high velocity. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So, if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.